This time on the show, we're automating everything. Darren shows off intelligent scripting with Expect for Linux. Then I'll be encrypting folders with a context menu in GNOME, pairing them with some cloud services, and boom, you've got secure backups. Plus, multi-core GCC compiling, directory size scripting, and can USB drives be trusted? Hmm, all that and more, this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. This is, of course, your weekly dose of Technolust. What's up, guys? Hey, it's good to see you again. It's so, been a while. How was ShmooCon? Oh, ShmooCon was awesome. I, I had the best time ever. I loved working the table. That was really fun. Yeah. I loved just being a vendor and hanging out and talking to everybody. It's a, it's a good time. And then when really the crazy it. ninja came out and gave that presentation on the keylogger right. and all of our BIOSes. Crazy. No, actually, we haven't been to ShmooCon yet, no. That's this gotcha. weekend as of this recording, so we will have a ton of awesome ShmooCon goodies for you guys in the coming weeks. Website. Yes, yeah. it's going to be fantastic. Yes, it will. I'm so it always excited. is. This will be our sixth, fifth, fifth year going? Sixth year? My, I don't remember. It'll be my third? Or, no, fourth. I think yeah. fourth year. Wow. I Between six years. Six years? Yeah, Paul's Dang. got us beat. Paul actually has me on one. I think you, you were at the first one, Paul's weren't you? Paul's an alumni. Yeah, I wasn't the first one, but the one before he got. Yeah. You wow. know, I'm super stoked that it's been moved up, so it's not going to be Snowmageddon or Snowpocalypse or whatever you know, it's been. You know, I completely agree, because last year was insane. Yeah. All that snow on the ground. There was like four feet of snow in D.C. It was, it was crazy. Well, I'm super excited, because between that and, what, DerbyCon, TorCon, and DEF CON, we're just like, we Yay! will see you. We will see all of you. Army, all. Yes. Eventually, we should go to the UK and then see the rest of you. BrewCon, Brussels. It'll be awesome. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've been meaning to. Yeah, me too. All right. So, oh, we should probably also mention we got a little set upgrade. Woohoo! Yes, on our way to I'm, season 11. You know, I have to give Paul props for this over here. This looks beautiful. I like this My Little Pony Rainbow thing going on behind me. <laughs> okay. I like it. <laughs> all right. That's not I exactly what I would think he was going for. I think it looks forward. nice. <laughs> Hey, you know how it is. It's Darren and sheet metal. What could go wrong? Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, I don't know, pinky fingers. Speaking of what could go wrong, guess what today is? What? I kind of messed up when we got back from CES because something in our internal docs were all. But anyway, point of the matter is this is episode 1024. No matter what that crazy CES hangover Vegas experience was, this is actually 1024. And that means what? It's episode 1024! High well, five! Yeah. We're not going to have another episode like this until season 20, episode 48, which won't happen because we only go to 26. Oh, so, oh, okay. it's our I last 10-bit. I'm sorry, I'm slow. <laughs> it's our 10-bit uh, birthday. Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, well, happy birthday, Darren. Hey, you know what else Your is coming 10 up? 10 bits. Season 11, episode 11. Dude. Oh, snap. Dude. What is 1 what plus is 2 plus 4 plus 8? I'm going to tell you. An awesome party. Yeah. It's an awesome party. <laughs> yeah, we'll have more details on that, but uh, put it on your calendar. Season 11, Ooh, episode 11. I'm super 11. excited for that. Yeah, yeah, we should totally have a party downstairs. We will. Yeah, and the bottle with the German, the beer on the Germans. Yeah, oh yeah, it's going to... Mm -hmm. Okay. All, All right. right. <laughs> well, enough of that banter in the A block. Oh, except more banter in the A block. We have a gift from a fan. We have a gift, which came in a small flat rate box, which is what we use for the hack shop. Oh, and so, see, he got the $5 rate before it increased to five fifteen. Oh, you're right, he did. Yeah. So this is from Andrew in Arizona. Hey, Andrew. And thanks for watching. And he sent us floppy disks. No, no. No note? They're floppies. Well, it's not just floppies. There's something else in the cellophane. Yeah, what is that? Uh, a white, oh, a white something. powder of some sort. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a deskmate. Deskmate. Okay. What is deskmate? And resume creator for IBM. Oh, Ooh. I could have totally used that when I was in like and elementary school. There we go. We've got. Uh, this is an Intel Pro Wireless 2200 BG wireless network card. I think this is oh. a uh, P mini PCI, oh, uh, PCIe. Okay. And then we've got a Here's microprocessor a with a BGA, so it's somewhat recent. And this is a, oh, no, it's a Pentium D. <laughs> well, you know what? Thank they you. Would, they would look lovely in shadow boxes. Yes, we will have the tech shadow box soon enough. That'll it would look good really on the cool. set. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get around to it. You know what else would look good on the set? What? How about a segment on Expect? 
you can talk about that and you can expect me to be working on my segment. Awesome. <laughs> Which haven't really been finished yet. Bye. Have fun encrypting. Today I'm playing with a little Linux tool that any systems administrator can appreciate. It's called Expect and it's way better than any macro and here's why. See anyone who's ever used you know, uh, a macro to automate a mundane task knows that they, they're great until they go wrong and there are some inherent problems with it. Well first off, you know, uh, the, if the macro program is simply one that just executes keystrokes or mouse clicks, any interaction outside of that program, such as like, I don't know, you accidentally move the mouse or hitting the keyboard, um, is going to just wreak havoc on your script. And for this reason, your computer is pretty much useless while it's automating that task. Well. The other problem is that once the macro gets derailed, all hell breaks loose. I mean, think about it. Your script doesn't actually know where it went pear-shaped, so it keeps going. And that command, you know, rm tac rf star that was supposed to run in the temp directory, yeah, that just ran in root. Oopsie. Well, anyway, um, expect solves both of these issues by firstly spawning its own session that doesn't take over the interactive shell and secondly, having smarts. And for the most part, you know, there are so many wicked features of expect, so don't expect me to go over them all here today. But I'm about to demo basically what will get you 80% of the way there with four simple commands. Now, an expect script looks very similar to any other bash script, uh, and it's just that we're going to declare expect instead of bash or sh. So here I am in a new script, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and issue uh, my shebangs, but instead of slash bin slash sh or bash, I'm gonna do slash usr slash bin slash expect. Simple as that. Now everything from this point on is going to be run by that binary. Now if you don't have expect on your system already, and I don't know, say you're running a Debian flavor like Ubuntu, as you might expect, it's just simply a matter of running apt get install expect. These expect jokes aren't gonna end anytime soon. Now, the first thing in our script is, is going to need to do is actually going to declare um, expect and, and set a process to spawn. And this can be anything. And in fact, I've actually um, had it do, you know, it can actually do multiple spawned processes, but for now we're just going to focus on one. You see, in the past I've even used it to like flash firmware by serial, by spawning minicom, or automating backup tasks by spawning FTP. Now today I'm going to add an awesome little package to my uh, Wi-Fi pineapple over SSH. So what I'm going to want to do is spawn SSH. So just as I would from the command line, I just want to spawn SSH and then it's going to be at root, um, I'm sorry, SSH root at my IP address. And there we go. And now it has created that, uh, that session. So the next set of expect, uh, and send commands are executed within the SSH session and they will begin by, well, saying what is it I'm expecting to see? And if I don't see, and here's where it gets awesome, if I don't see what I expect, I'm not gonna continue and that is what makes this tool so powerful. It says, you know, what am I expecting when I SSH to my pineapple? Well, we're expecting to be asked for our password prompt. So what I'm gonna need to write is expect, and then quote, password. Simple as that. Now we're going to follow it up though with a send command and a send is simply sending the characters of my choosing. The send command does this pretty quickly so I should probably mention two nifty little options here. Uh, send tack s will send the characters slowly and it's good if you're like say working in like a 9600 baud telnet session while send tack h will make the characters look like they're humanly typed. So you know, it puts a little bit of variation in the delays between every character. Now, I'm going to send my password using send, and then in quotes, pineapples are yummy, and then backslash r and close my quotes. It's really key that we do that backslash r. That is our carriage return or our enter key. It's kind of important when logging in. Now that I've initiated my SSH, uh, and logged into my pineapple, I should expect to see a prompt. So I'm going to tell my script that uh, I need to expect, and then this would be root at, and then my host name, which is pineapple. 
And there we go. And from there, it's just a matter of additional expect and send commands to automate this task. And well, I have a pre-made script that downloads TCP dump tack mini, installs it, and starts grabbing packets. So let's take a look at that. I already uh, got one in the oven, as it were. So as I continue, uh, I expect uh, root at pineapple. And then, you know, I, uh, or up here. And then I SCP from my current host this file that I have waiting for here for it, and I send it to slash TMP. I'm expecting to see the password again. I enter my laptop's password, which is lame password. And then I expect to see my prompt again, and then I'll do the O package install, yada, 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 until I finally run my newly installed package, TCP dump, which is awesome for sniffing packets right on the pineapple. And then I finish it up with interact. All right, so let's go ahead and run the script, and you'll actually see how it finishes and how on the last line the interact process is, is done. So uh, as you can see, I have my TCP dump.exp here. I can cat that file. And I've already done chmod plus x to make it executable. I've got my pineapple plugged in. If I ping 172.16.42.1, I can see I've got replies. So it is up, and everything's all happy and ready to go. So just dot slash tcp dump.exp doesn't have to have .exp, I like that. But uh, boom, I run that, and I can see it spawned SSH at it. And I just wait for a moment, and hey, it was asked for the password. Bam, it issued the password like that. It's already SCPing over. It's going to be asked for the password for my machine. It's done that. It's now installing TCP dump. And as soon as it's done installing, it's going to go ahead and run it. And there we go. I'm running TCP dump on port 80 and not source. 172.16.42.1. So this is looking at anything on port 80 that is not uh, this, that is not initiated by the pineapple itself, which is really cool. Um, there's a lot more fun finesse you can do with TCP dump on a pineapple. And if I had more, if I had some connected clients right now, you'd probably see some traffic. But for the most part, this is where we end with that last line. Our fourth command so far is uh, interact, and basically all that does is gives control back to the user which is pretty cool. This can be used, say, if you have a part of your script that actually needs some human interaction. I know, pretty nifty stuff, huh? There are tons of other commands for expect, like sleep to delay or, or fork to get really fancy. But I leave that as an exercise to you and, well, the man pages. I just know that this tool is absolutely indispensable when performing complicated tasks repeatedly and correctly every time flashing and configuring a boatload of Wi-Fi pineapples to bring to ShmooCon. But we'll find out about that already since this is aired anyway. That's expect, and I hope you dig it. So you know, let me know what crazy stuff you're automating with it. Um, you know, I hear it'll actually do those TPS cover sheets for you as well. So that's kind of nice. And as always, let's say uh, stay tuned because in just a bit, Shannon's going to be setting up encrypted backups in Ubuntu. But first, let's take a quick break and then check in with Kirby and Starbuck for the meow of the week. It doesn't matter whether you're in the shower or hanging out with friends or showering with your friends. When a killer idea hits you, you need to snag your domain fast. And with Domain.com's simple search and checkout process, you're going to have that domain in like no time. Plus, when you're ready to take the next step, Domain.com has rock solid hosting infrastructure to create a perfect foundation for your project. And get this, the guys over at Domain.com, they're huge Hack5 fans. They want to hook you up. So they've got a coupon code just for us. It's HAK5 at checkout. Gets you 15% off. So when you think domains, think domain.com. <laughs> 